and we invite you. You are so welcome to take over this, this whole place, everybody online. God, we just bless even, we bless God, everyone who's listening. And thank you, God, that everyone's supposed to be here, including the angels, filling the place. Thank you, God. And God, may we empty ourselves before you so you can fill us afresh, even right now. And God, we just release your words today. Jesus, we release your frequency that you want to release. Help us, Holy Spirit, release your angels to sing with us. And we bless Naya wherever you are to be whole and healed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right.
So it's got to stay at the door. Yes. Can't come in here. Yep. Kick out all that out. Lay your burdens down. Leave them down at the altar. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hear my husband's laugh back there.
Do you see yourself before the Father on the sea of glass, taking your crowns off, kneeling down, and giving it to Him? Do you see yourself doing that? Do you see yourself doing that? Taking off what, what, what kind of crowns? The crown of righteousness that He gave you. Different crowns that He gave you. Crown of healing. Crown of prophecy. His garments that He gave you. Laying them down before His feet. Why do we do that? We honor Him with our vessels. We fill it up with Him.
Amen. I'm just here to do the salvation call.
right mind again, which he wasn't for a little while. He was last Sunday, but then he kind of slipped back. And, but anyway, moving forward. Prophet Jerron, bringing the word of God today. Um, cheerful giving time. About a hundred dollars away from
Testimony? Just wanted to give God glory uh, when He's doing it in my life. Um, we just have our first our one year anniversary um, last Sunday for the church that for the Ghana branch. So our vision is to deal with at least one church in every country in the world. And just want to give God glory for what He's doing.
to add a little bit to uh, Gary Young's testimony. She did a good job. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know why she got that blessing. It was because she gave a big tithe. So when she gave that big tithe, God just reimbursed her. Amen. All right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Start off with a prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord. I invite you, Lord. Go before me, Lord. May this word that's about to go forth bless, Lord. I humble myself. I, I just pray to be transparent and to speak what it is that you told me to speak. I yield myself to you to do your will. For it is your will for me to preach the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so uh, I'm going to start off by uh, just giving a little testimony on how this sermon even came about. Um, so I was at work. Um, I'm a private contractor, so I just get contracts. So I ended up getting a contract um, in Olathe, and we were moving this individual. And I moved the individual maybe Monday or so, and everything went well. She was very nice then. Are you thirsty? I appreciate the hard work you're doing, all of that. And I'm like, you know, just done my job. Now, this was Thursday, Thursday. And I'm sitting up there and I'm talking to some of my friends. And the same lady that we moved, she's just looking at me and she's just standing there and she's doing this. I'm like, she all right? And then she pointed at me. I'm like, <sighs> so me being in charge, I have to go deal with that client. So I go over and the lady's like, you stole my laptop. So I'm like, you know, you can't, you know. So I'm like, well, we moved you on Tuesday. You still may have not went through all your belongings. You know, let's, let me just go help you look. She's like, yeah, sure. Like you stole it. I already reported you to the authorities. I'm like, what? You know? And the way she was looking at me, if she would have had a gun, she would have killed me. She was so angry. So I'm walking, and I'm just going to be honest. This was like, you're a black guy with dreads. You're guilty. I just know that's how she was looking at me. So I'm like, man, what did the laptop look like? She was like, of course you're not going to acknowledge that you stole it. Um, I'm like, just let me know what it looks like. And she like, it's this. She described it. And she was like, it has long, um, you know, like like uh, luggage. She was like, like the one you would get in college. as to say, like, you wouldn't know nothing about college. Oh, wow. So she was going there. You know, now I'm like, I'm feeling that rise up. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, ma'am, I'm not understanding or what you're thinking, but I made correct money. I can promise you I didn't steal this. I was like, but we're going to help you look for it. Uh, she said, God is going to punish you. He know what you did. One of my partners was like, he a preacher. She said, sure he is. So I'm going to my phone, I'm about to pull up my sermons, and I am a preacher. But it wasn't no, you know, reasoning with her at that moment. She wanted her laptop and her Amazon, her free Amazon t-shirts. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. She's looking and she's just upset. And I'm like, you know, oh my God, I can't wait till we find this laptop. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna let her have it. <laughs> so 
I'm like, I, and I, I mean, I didn't know where it was, but I said, Holy Spirit, lead us to this Amen. laptop. Now, I'm like, ma'am, did you check the, the unit that we moved you from? She said, it's nothing there. My daughter already, already checked. And I'm like, I'm not about to go over there and find it. She don't think I'll put it back. So I'm like, I'm not going to leave this lady's site. And after I said, Holy Spirit, lead us to it. Out comes the closet. And my friend pulls it out. Is this it? And she like, everything in me wanted to act. Oh. But I looked at her and I said, it's okay, I forgive you. And I'm like, my hands were shaking when I said it. How did that come out? <laughs> that ain't what I felt at all. <laughs> no. But, you know, I got to see that scripture of when you heat the burning coal on a person's head when you do the right thing by God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I went back and I walked away, but it was such a gratifying feeling just to to see her in that state of, look, you thought I was a wicked black guy with dreads, that's a thief, and I'm just this bad and horrible person, and I held a mirror up, and that person was actually you. But I didn't treat you like you treated me. I just showed the love of God. Amen. Amen. Now when I walk back to my friends, they like, oh, Briggs, he's a real deal. Like, oh, man, hey, let's go back over. You know, they on that. And I was feeling it then. Now I'm like, you know, like, hey, you know, like, and I just started thinking, I'm like, Man, I always take the high road in every way. Yeah. I took him loss on the chin, turn the other cheek, and keep pursuing God. And it didn't hit me to the rock home where I'm like, God, like, I need you to start avenging me. You know, like, I'm not taking it. He said, you know, don't repay evil for evil. For vengeance is mine. But I'm like, I know. You know, but I just need to see you defending me. Like, what is all of this for? So the Lord started showing me, like, what is a Christian? The term Christian comes from Christ. Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua Hamashiach. Hamashiach is anointed one. So that, what he was showing me is a Christian is not a title that you're given. It's the position that you've taken. You have been anointed to do God's will and be his ambassador here. No servant is greater than a master. So, I'm like, you know, that feel good to know that I'm a Christian and that you're anointed that you have the Holy Spirit because in order for you to be anointed you have to have the Holy Spirit so let's turn to
Acts 5, 32. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. So the Holy Spirit comes to those that is obeying his commands. So it just brought me to the, the thinking. And I wanted to make sure that everybody is truly understanding of your position in Christ. It's not you just repeating a sinner's prayer. That's the beginning of your walk with Christ. Man, yeah. uh, God was, was really showing me, and I've repeated myself a lot with what the Lord has just instructed me to do. But the church is really lacking in the department of his word. And his word is what really is going to transform you. The Lord was revealing to me that the reason why people aren't really developing the way that they're supposed to develop is because they don't have the knowledge of what's in the Bible so that they can walk it out, so that they can engraft themselves and allow Jesus to take root in them. See, when I get in those situations where I want to act out in my flesh because I'm so rooted and grounded in Christ and he has took residence in me, I can't. I can't even, I can't even fathom doing the things that people can do. I can't do it. He's taken up residence in me. So the Lord brought up the ten virgins. Um, it just came to me. So, Mike, do you know what scripture that is? Which one? The ten virgins. I think it's Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 25. And just read that one. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Okay, Might be 11. Matthew 25, 11. Go, just start one, one, just start from one. Chapter 25, read one through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened, likened to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the, the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And then, just for a second. So, obviously, that oil in the lamp is the Holy Spirit. So they're saying that it's going to be five who are wise, right? And then there's going to be five who are foolish who didn't and going to be shut out. That's the importance of those who have the Holy Spirit to the point where the door will be shut on those who don't have it. Okay, keep reading. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But, but he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Now, the eclipse then passed. And we can see certain events taking place. Now, I don't like to just jump off the porch and say 
ridiculous things. But let's look at what took place after that eclipse. Now, I don't want to get off topic, but we had, I don't know if y'all seen uh, Vladimir Putin said he discovered um, one of the, what was it, the oldest, he uncovered a vault that was yeah. And they found like black Jesus yeah. <laughs> after this. Yeah. Now I have some people calling my phone. Like, yeah, yeah, I told you. I ain't even here to to dispute any of that because it really don't matter. We all call Jews inwardly. You should never be looking at a person and trying to judge them based on what a person looks like. But it just, to me, I'm like, oh, he up to something. They cooking up something. Yeah. And then I seen that he's become ambassadors with Africa, and they're trying to partner. You know, that's just one thing that they're up to. And then we also seen what was it last night or, or, or uh, where Iran, Iraq, Iran, Iran attacked Israel. Yeah. So I'm telling you, we are in the end of the end times. Very well so, we might have just really like kicked off the seven year tribulation. Yeah. What is really gonna start that unveiling of the seals is the uncovering of the Antichrist. So all of that fighting that they're doing right now over there is because they got those red heifers. And in order for you to uh, sacrifice one of those red heifers, you have to be a red heifer without spot or blemish on it. And they have six of them. Now they sacrifice one of those red heifers and that is what initiates the abomination of desolation where the Antichrist takes the seat and he sees God. That's how close we are, right? So before all of those things happen, God has to purify his church. And it's vital for us to know the Bible Amen. to the point where when I, I, I said it last time I preached. There, we have everything that we have that, that we need. We have revelation and, and mystery knowledge of, of more than Peter had, more than the apostles had. Because as you read the Bible, it says, wait to a certain time to unravel it. There's mysteries that God is trying to deliver to his people right now. But we're babies still. We're still babies. And what has happened to the church is we got babies teaching babies. We got four-year-olds teaching babies. And the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. This stuff is, is getting serious. Yeah. Even me, I'm like, I knew about the red heifers, but I didn't know what it really meant. Yeah. I should have been on that. But God has been teaching me about this stuff. I've been a Christian since 2019. And I'm like, man, I've been a Christian for a whole 10 years. So I'm missing it. So I'm like, you know, where are we missing, Lord? And the Lord brought up to me. You remember maybe three or four, maybe a month ago, when we was praying and worshiping. And I don't know if it was my mom, but the praise and worship was like, fire, 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 fire. We was calling fire down, fire down. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the confirmation was, you just, that was the last song you sung today. Oh, wow. So I'm like, all right, I got to say it. Oh, that's funny. But, yeah. So, um, when that happened, we didn't do nothing. We just came here. Oh, hallelujah. You know, did you feel that? But what did that, what is God really saying to us in that, that moment of calling down fire? You know, in the scriptures, 
Mike, my bad. It's, it, I heard it just flowing, so if the scripture comes to you, I'm just going. Um, the scripture that says, there's one who's coming to baptize and water, but there's one that's going to come and baptize with fire. Start with, with Matthew. I indeed, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan, his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I've been talking about the wheat and the chaff for a while. Sure. But what a fire is symbolic of is sacrifice. He, and, and, and the way that you truly worship God is by being a living sacrifice. That's what he's calling for us, to be a living sacrifice. Meaning you have to die to what it is that y'all want and do what I'm telling you to do. So we was here worshiping him and all of that, and we might say he kind of rebuked us because we just, we didn't understand what he was saying. But I'm requiring you, you worshiping me with your, with, with, with singing praises and things, but true worshiping me is being a living sacrifice. So what he was revealing to me is what I was dealing with everything that was thrown at me is that wheat and chaff of him burning certain things off of me. So that I can take up residence because God ain't going to share. God is a jealous God and, and he's not going to share his glory. Once he takes that resident up in you, I need to be in control. I need to tell you to get up at 3 a.m. and you get up. I need you to, if I need you to go over here and, and minister to this person over here, I need you to minister to this person. Like AJ said in his testimony about his friend and how he got that unction to do it. And he never did it. And his friend ended up passing away. Mm -hmm. How much more now are we to <coughs> really leave in that milk, that elementary teaching? Stuff that we should have been doing. And God is going to really start propelling us and growing us even faster because the times that we're in. Yes. Now, you might be ministering to a lot of people right now, or might not be. But, and they may be listening to you, ah, uh -huh. I'm telling you right now, it's coming, 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 where that you're going to have their undivided attention. Now, if you are still a baby, when people are coming to you looking for answers, what? The Bible says to, to um, be seasoned with salt, ready to give an account to anybody. It's vital for you to know that word is life or death. It's life or death. So much so, the five virgins. Some didn't have it. You gotta allow yourself to read that word, and you gotta put that 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 flame to it. Uh, another verse just came to me. Um, Revelations two. It says, "I'm, I'm hearing." Uh, I charge you to buy for me gold that's refined. When he's talking about the church, I think it's the church of Ephesus. Yep. Just start reading. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, these things says, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands, I know your works. Your labor, your your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have per and you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember therefore from, from where you have fallen, repent and do the work and do the first works. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. 
He who has an ear, let him hear what the, what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in, in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and, come, and came to life. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Okay, let me just stop. I want you to keep reading, but let me just explain to you what he's reading. It's the seven churches in Revelation. Um, I always was like, these are just seven stages of our walk with Christ. Because you can find yourself in each one of these churches that God either rebuked or accepted. Um, I was listening to Perry Stone, and he was saying that the seven Churches are actually stages of, of the whole Christianity. So the, the Christian age, these are the seven stages the age. of the churches at church ages. So when they went, listen, I should have stopped you. Listen to when he's saying what they were doing right and what they were doing wrong. Mm -hmm. So you said um, they left their first love. Leaving your first love is leaving those teachings. Because what I was just learning, because I'm like been kind of like getting to the early church fathers and what they were teaching. And you know how it is when I tell Emmanuel something, by the time it gets all the way to Pastor Dan, it's gonna change. <laughs> you know? So I wanna know what were they teaching? Even though that was the early church and they don't have the revelation that we have nowadays or the mysteries that we have nowadays but i just wanted to understand because they were experiencing miracles and, and some really cool stuff was happening with them so i wanted to kind of just allow the lord to lead me if that's where he's leading me to to get my foundation in order because i can tell y'all all day long but i have to do it myself i can't allow just because i ain't triggered by what somebody said or done to me and I reacted out as now I'm a Christian and that's it. Paul wrote, uh, I don't know if you can find this, but he was saying, while yet you are being saved, meaning this is a process that you're under when you're, when you're walking with Christ. Not that you just said it and it's over. You know, you can see people uh, who haven't had correct doctrine, haven't had the teachings necessary, and it's easier for them to just drift and go back all off into the world. You know, uh, for me, my spiritual father was Sammy. And we can see that Sammy had that gifting <laughs> preaching mysteries, all right? An anointing to teach where you'd be reading the Bible and you'd be like, how did Sammy get that revelation, you know? That's because he's not a baby. He's not a four-year-old. You know, I remember Juan teaching me. And uh, Juan was teaching me about rapture. And Juan was saying stuff that I couldn't even fathom. But now when you start going back to that early church and I started learning, I'm like, oh, he was on it up, you know? So I'm like, it is vital for us to, you know, get to that. That word. Now, go ahead and keep reading. I'm, I'm, if I stop you, because I'm just going now. If I stop you, go back to the, uh, to the beginning of that sentence and then just I'll keep on. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second day. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things says, He who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know your works, and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name, and you did, and you, and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of, of Balaam, Balaam, 
who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat these things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the children manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, these things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the worst. Nevertheless, I have a few, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the things shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, and to the, to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have the doc, this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden. But hold fast what you have till, till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power in the nations. Let me just say this really quick. The times that we're entering to, if you're a person that's unsure of your walk, you ain't gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. If you're struggling with understanding or, or, or following commands or Understanding who God is now, you're not going to make it. But if you're a person that is devoted to Christ and to learning everything, you're going to shine. You're going to shine in these times. And it will be no reason for you to be afraid of the things that are coming. You're going to be ready. You're going to be ready when these things come. Yeah. You ain't going to be hiding. Mm -hmm. So um, continue talking to you. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things say, says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white. For they are worthy. Who has overcomes, he who overcomes shall be clothed in the white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Okay. Can you get the concept that you're going to go through stuff? You're going to go through stuff in life. And the Bible says to count it joy when you enter trials of various kinds, because it's doing a work in you. So when God says that you are overcomers, that means you can throw the kitchen sink at them and they're still going to overcome and still get glory. And the more that you're able to continue to do that, the more God will take up that residence in you. And then you're going to start entering their rooms and people are going to just turn around because they feel something. They feel something different in this person. Or somebody's sick family relative come up to you or, or you, you're going to be the first person that pops in their minds. It's time for us Whatever it is that you're called to do, you better start doing it now. Don't allow that thought to creep in. I ain't ready. I ain't got The way that you can begin is just by getting in prayer. Spending what I started doing now. I said, I'm not. When I wake up in the morning, I'm not eating. I'm not doing nothing until I can read and spend time with the Lord. Get my daily bread. And then I'm going to go out and 
whoever, this is how God works, because he wants you to partner with him. He don't want to have to do everything with him. Uh, he don't want to have to do everything, right? I'm just here to back you, right? So you can just be reading about Matthew, but the person that you're going to encounter that day going to ask you a question that you just studied. Gonna make you feel good. I already got the answer real quick, you know. And, and that that right there is what encourages you more and more to spend more time with God. And that's how you continue to grow. Come out of those diapers and put on your big boy pants. Um, uh, we can keep reading, um, but I can just summarize it for you. I just spoke on you going through different things in the world and overcoming it. What we have to do as a church is we gotta take serious um, Bible studies. We gotta take serious um, what Pastor Patricia, the intercessors, Monday night prayers. You gotta start doing those type of things. You gotta be ready because I know we got a bunch of words spoken that a bunch of people are going to start crowding and coming into the church. So I'm up here preaching, but you're just as important to the move of God that he's about to do. And you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to be seasoned. You got to be ready to be deal with some persecution. Somebody spitting in your face. Somebody doing something just, you know, just foul. You got to be ready for it. Um, you can see these people are, they, 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 they are really, what is the scripture that says they're called evil, good, and good, evil? Uh, wicked. Wicked. They're called wicked. But you see the abortion stuff, and I just watched uh, with Kamala Harris and the Democrats, they were saying something about uh, abortions. And they're speaking to the left, or they're speaking to the people that are for abortions. But in Arizona, they had uh, in the, the, the Congress office, I don't know what the office was, but they had a whole praise and worship in there, speaking in tongues and everything. And they banned abortion to the point where if you get an abortion or somebody performs an abortion, you can do jail time for it. So, so that was a victory. Yeah. But you should see how people are looking at them like, y'all are just the most cruel, wicked people. So you're not dealing with rational people at all. So, you you know, somebody might come up and just throw pee at you. You got to be ready to endure that and continue to show the love of Christ. Uh, uh, what was that? One of the Democrats or something, but they were like talking to... The Republicans that just passed that law was like, uh, their blood is on your hands. You're like, what? <laughs> that's really like, that's a twisted thinking. We're trying to save life. You're trying to end life. And you're telling me that the blood is on. <sighs> but yeah, so that's the time that we end now. Um, if everybody wants to just stand, either whether you're rededicating or if you just want prayer, or if you want to come to the front, it's up to you. But I take serious, be taking this position of being a, speaking what the Lord is telling me to do. And I desire for each one of us not to get up there in those gates and hear, depart from me, I never knew it. Don't live your Christian life as a gamble where, you know, you know it's stuff that you should stop doing, start doing, you know it. And you're just going to get up there and just hope for the best. That is ignorant. Don't do that. Prepare yourself now. God is, he's not a human where you can do you know, you can do humans, but God knows everything. 
a way to test yourself is if something is pulling you to do something and you're like, I still ain't gonna do it. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I ain't gonna do it. That little thing that you're compromised with will get bigger. So lay it all down. You might not know how you're gonna stop. You might not know how you're gonna overcome this type of stuff, but come to the Lord and, and let him direct how he's going to free you. Let go the reins of your life. The end is here. You know, if everybody knew when Jesus was coming, everybody would immediately get their party in now. And then you <laughs> are right, now ready. But he's coming at a time you don't expect for a reason. That's the testing of that faith. Yeah. That's one thing I was studying when it comes to um, the revelation of that. When he says, I'm coming back, you do not know what time I'm coming back. A lot of times, we, people and even the church, we teach it in a way of everyone's kind of outside looking up in the air like, oh, Jesus is coming. And it does not mean that. It means personal. When, say for instance, so, okay, <laughs> say for instance, someone here is ministering, preaching, teaching before the people, but yet when they get home, they drinking, smoking, and gambling, and acting like they ain't got no care in the world. They cussing out their kids, they cussing out their wife, they being abusive. They says you do not know what day or hour I will come back to you. Out there before the people, they front one way, but behind closed doors, they doing another thing. Well, Jesus, he'll come to that person at that particular point in time, and all of a sudden, boom, they drop dead. That's personal. So that's the beautiful part about this Bible that we love, serve, and understand. It's like it's personal. Everything's personal. You should have it in your heart where you're not even going to sit there and be like, you know, Jesus is coming back. No, he's already back. He's a part of me. He's inside of me. That's how you live your life. You live your life like he's with you. I would love to go to someone's house and they start talking like, hey, you know, kind of keep your shoes out there because Jesus, you know, Jesus walks around. I'm like, what? <laughs> you got Jesus in your house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Jesus in the house. <laughs> you know, but that's how we should all be. Talk to him like he's in your house because he's in you in your house. In you. Even in the, the term house, you are a house unto him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So uh, let's just start with proclamation, just speaking out. So, Father God, Father God. we just repent. We just repent. For every area that we're falling short on. For every area we're falling short on. You are God. You are God. And God alone. God alone. I set you. I set you. On the throne of my heart. On the throne of my heart. I present myself. I present myself. As a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. Teach me your ways. Teach me your ways. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.